Hey guys, welcome to my video channel. I'm Grey Chow and today in this video, I'm going to share with you one advanced editing technique which is known as luminosity masking. So what is luminosity masking? Luminosity masking is an advanced selection technique that creates various selections based on luminosity value of your image. Does that explain anything to you? Not really, right? Never mind. Let me give you an example here. If you have been using any editing software like Adobe Lightroom, you may notice that there are sliders for adjusting the exposure, the highlight, the shadow, white, and black. These sliders actually target different brightness level of your photo. Now let's have a look at the histogram here. On the histogram, you can see that the exposure slider focuses on making adjustment to the midtone area. The highlight focuses on the bright area and the white slider focuses on the brightest area of the photo. On the other hand, shadow slider focuses on the dark area, and the black slider focuses on the darkest area of the photo. Five sliders for five different areas of the image, and they are based on the luminosity value. That's the example from Lightroom. But for Photoshop, luminosity masking is able to break down your image into more than just five areas. Here's the histogram again. Let's start with the bright areas of the image. First, you can have a selection to focus on all the bright areas of the photo, like here. And then, you narrow it down to select only the brighter areas. And then, you create another selection to select only the much brighter areas. And then, the fourth selection, which is focused on the much, much brighter areas. And lastly, one more selection to select only the brightest areas of the photo. To make it easy for me to say all these selections, I'm going to name them as like 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. On the other hand, the same goes for all the dark areas. You have dark 1, dark 2, dark 3, dark 4, and dark 5. For the midtone, any area that's not bright or dark is a midtone. Again, we have midtone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so totally 5 of them here. Basically, for luminosity masking, we have a total of fitting selections. Here comes a question. Do you really need to break down into so many selections? And what's the benefit in doing so? Well, there are two main reasons here. The first one is that luminosity masking is giving you a much more precise selection in apply any adjustment. As you can see now, we have fitting selections. With such precise level of selections, this also allows us to make adjustments to a particular shadow or highlight areas without affecting any other areas. This also allows us to make a better exposure recovery, for example, recover an overexposed sky. Second, all the selections that are created by luminosity masking are nicely feathered. This means that the edges of those selections can smoothly blend into the surrounding without any halo effect. Halo effect is a bright light around the edge of an adjustment, which is something that you often see on a photo that is not carefully edited using the traditional brush tool and also the layer mask technique. And to be honest, it's not easy to have a perfect masking without any halo effect unless you are very experienced in using the brush tool. So far, luminosity masking only works on Photoshop. And if you are new to Photoshop, I would suggest you to get familiar with the layer and layer mask, the selection in the Photoshop first. And I have a two blog posts that talk about the fundamentals of Photoshop. And if you're interested, you can check out them in the below description of this video. So, how are we going to use luminosity masking? To make your light easy, you don't have to create all those light 1 to light 5, dark 1 to dark 5, and midtone 1 to midtone 5 masks. I've created a simple Photoshop action to help you on this. And if you want to download the Photoshop action, you can check out the link in the below description of this video too. For this video, I'm going to use my action pack to create all those luminosity masks. But if you want to know how to manually create them, probably in the future, I can create another video to teach you how to create them manually. As you can see now on my Photoshop here, I already have two images imported as layers here. So one is underexposed layer, so which the photo is darker and the sky is not overexposed. Another one, the sky is overexposed. So I'm going to recover the sky by using this underexposed layer here. So let's temporarily disable this layer first. What I'm going to do next is to create a luminosity mask. So to create the luminosity mask, as I mentioned before, I can use my Grey Child Action Pack here. So to open up my Action Pack, you go to Window, Action to open the Action Window. 
as you can see under the screenshot LM action pack here, they have a list of action to create the luminosity mask. So now just make sure that LM underscore likes underscore all is selected and click on the play button to run the action. Once it's done, go to channel window and as you can see that totally five channels have been created here. Now I'm going to browse through all these masks one by one to find out which is the best one for me to do the exposure recovery. So let's start with the light one. Also, I want to hide this first. For the light one, as you can see that not only he selected the overexposed area, he also selected some of the area of the foreground, which I think that there's uh, too much selection for me. So I want it to be more narrowed down to only the overexposed area. So let's go to the light two. The light two is much better. And I think I'm going to use the light two, but let's check out the light three. For light tree, it's much more narrowed down to this area, but I think that it's a bit too restricted. So, but anyway, I will try the light tree first. If the light tree doesn't work, I will give a try on light tree. So let's proceed to check out the rest. So the light four uh, is too much, and the light five, definitely this won't be able to do a very good blending result here. So let's start with the light tool. To create a selection from the channel here, just holding down the control button or command button on Mac and click on the light tool channel. And this will create a selection here. And now back to this underexposed layer here, enable it. And I'm going to click on this layer mask button here. This will create a layer mask with the selection applied to it. As you can see now, I have the sky nicely recovered. There's something I have to do to fine tune this mask here because the blending result is not very perfect. There's some dark edges here. I'm going to use the brush tool and make sure that I use the black foreground color and the opacity I'm going to go down to maybe like 25%. So I'm going to remove some of the dark edges here like that, much better. Another issue is that the sky look a little bit flat because that we only bring back the highlight from this photo and without the shadow area. So that means that a little bit lack of contrast. So I'm going to bring back some contrast here. So now using back the same brush too. Now make sure the foreground color is white. I'm going to start with 26% also. Adjust brush size accordingly and just brush on this shadow area. Okay, it looks much better now. So another thing I want to do here is to, you can see that this area is totally overexposed and we are not able to recover that from the underexposed photo here. So what I can do here is to remove it using the healing brush tool. So to use the healing brush tool, I'm going to create an empty layer and use the healing brush tool. Zoom in on the image here. holding down the alternate button and to sample the area around this and then draw a line here and also here okay next there's also some flare here so again using the same technique it's just a brush size okay the much more better now. So here's how I use the luminosity masking to recover an overexposed sky. From here, I will apply my usual editing process flow by correcting the white balance, adding more contrast, renege, and sharpening the photo, and then produce the final result that you see on the cover of this video. Now let's back on this Grey Chow LM action pack here. Other than the action to create all the likes masks, I can also have the action to create a dark mask, mid-tone, and also all of them. Also, you can also delete the light mask by just running the action for this. Same for the delete for the dark, mid-tone, and also delete all. So that's all for this video. I hope you like it. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to give a like to the video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my video channel so that you won't miss out any future episode. So, see you again in the next video.